Hello, everyone, and welcome to MSK Unknown Case Series, week 57. Here we have an amazing case. I can't wait to share this with you. Here we have a frontal radiograph of the left foot five years ago and a frontal radiograph of the same patient on the left foot now. And the question that I have for you guys is, what type of matrix mineralization is in this tumor? Is it cartilage, osteoid, ground glass, or fat? What type of matrix mineralization is in this tumor? And I want to come back to the image and just talk about this because there is a lesion here in the fifth metatarsal. And actually, the person who read this study didn't even mention this. And although it's subtle, it's a real finding. And it's a aggressive lesion, believe it or not. There's a permeative, lytic, destructive lesion here in the fifth metatarsal. You can appreciate that there's endosteal scalloping we bear, of the cortex. We barely see the thickness of the cortex here. We have some lifting of the periosteum and some subtle periosteal reaction. We, of course, have soft tissue swelling right here, right? So this is definitely has aggressive features here. And then five years later, you can see that there's marked expansion of this lesion. Uh, you have some whittling of the fourth metatarsal shaft here, soft tissue swelling. You have a tumor that's resulted in chondroid matrix mineralization, right? In the form of rings and arcs, you can see these stippled areas, these comma-shaped areas of increased density. This is exactly what a chondroid tumor would look like in the form of rings and arcs. So of course, the answer here is uh, cartilage. This is actually a chondrosarcoma that we're seeing right here, right? So a nice example of what a malignant cartilage tumor can look like. And of course, five years ago, very subtle, but you know, very... Uh, expansive growth in the matter of years, right? So a chondrosarcoma is a malignant chondroid tumor that produces cartilage. This is, of course, the third most common malignant bone neoplasm after multiple myeloma and osteosarcoma. This can really occur anywhere. This can occur in the axial or the appendicular skeleton, but most commonly, it's going to occur in the femur, the pelvic bones, like the iliac bone, the tibia, the humerus, relatively rare in the tubular bones, like the metacarpals, metatarsals, phalanges in the hands and the foot. But of course, the lesion I'm showing you is actually in the metatarsal. So never say never, and it's not impossible, but of course rare, but I'm showing you this for a reason. And, you know, this produces rings and arcs, kind of a stippled matrix mineralization that you saw kind of looking like commas, rings, arcs. And matrix mineralization is a very important term that we use when we describe bone tumors. So matrix refers to the material that it's producing. So in this case, cartilage, and they look like rings and arcs. Osteoid tumors produce bone. So fluffy, dense, amorphous bone is produced. Things like osteosarcoma, osteomas, they produce bone. Fibrous lesions like fibrous dysplasia produce fibrous tissue. So in the form of ground glass, sort of hazy matrix mineralization. Fatty tumors like lipomas produce fat. So it's going to be radiolucent on x-ray. Mineralization, on the other hand, is the calcification associated with that matrix. So that's what we mean when we say matrix mineralization. Now, matrix is present in the majority of cases, 78% of chondrosarcomas, but it can be entirely lytic. In 22% of cases, it can be entirely lytic without the matrix mineralization seen on imaging. Now, usually the matrix, chondro matrix is low on an MRI, and that can be a clue that we're dealing with a chondrosarcoma. And I think it's important to talk a little bit about an enchondroma versus a chondrosarcoma. An enchondroma, of course, is a benign cartilage lesion and a chondrosarcoma is a malignant cartilage lesion. And oftentimes, particularly in the hands and the foot, if we see a lucent lesion that's cartilage forming, it's typically an enchondroma. Now, when can it be a chondrosarcoma? Well, if we see a soft tissue mass associated with it, if we see aggressive periosteal reaction, if we see uh, rapid growth in a short period of time. Uh, and, you know, of course, the books talk about endoscopic scalloping greater than two thirds of the thickness of the cortex. That's usually true in like the long bones like the femur, tibia, humerus, not as reliable in a tubular bone like the hand or the foot. However, if you were to do a bone scan, you know, and the, the uptake on the bone scan on a technetium 99M, you know, MDP study is more than the background in the anterior superior iliac spine, that can also be a sign of chondrosarcoma or, or low-grade chondrosarcoma. So those are some of the helpful clues that we look at in distinguishing an enchondroma versus a chondrosarcoma. Thank you so much for your attention. Please subscribe to the MedED page and support our mission in spreading free knowledge globally. We'll see you next week for another amazing case.